Hello? Are we all good here? Yeah? Is anyone falling asleep? No, you couldn't respond, right? So, I'm Michael. Um, usually when I speak, I talk about venture capital and I talk about Southeast Asia. But the funny thing is when I, um, when I meet entrepreneurs and even when we invest in entrepreneurs, I get a few questions. And one of the foremost important question is, how do I stay focused on my business? I mean, there's so many distractions. You think about your colleagues, your spouse, your kids maybe, your friends, you want to go out for drinks, you have to speak at slush. There's always distractions, day in, day out. So I kind of want to talk about my life's journey and how I got here and the things that keep, keep me focused. And what I, what I truly hope after these, let's say 15 minutes, you guys take away a few, I don't know, a few tips and tricks in terms of how I try to stay focused. So this is my lifeline. Um, and as you can see, it's a, it's a big mess. Um, so let's start at the top. So my life started in uh, 1975, which makes me 43. Yes, I am old. And when I was, and I think about five or six years old, um, I fell off my bike. And the reason is, why would I add this to my lifeline? Why is falling off my bike important to me? Well, I ripped my sternum. So I was cycling, a guy opened his door, I cycled into his door, I fell off my bike, and I was lucky because a normal person would, fell on the, would fall on the floor uh, and I fell on a pole. The pole hit my sternum and it ripped my sternum, which basically means that since I was five or six, when I take a deep breath, my chest hurts. And I've been living with that pain since, since forever. So a very important moment in my life. And you might ask, you know, Mike, you know, you're a funny guy, but why is this important? I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. There's a few more important parts in my life. Um, I decided to study martial arts. And then you might ask, why? Um, I don't have a picture because that would be too embarrassing and there's a few friends in the audience. But I used to be pretty chubby when I was uh, seven, eight years old. And I had these buck teeth and had a big afro. So my friends, well, I don't know if I should call them friends, but I was made fun of because I was, yeah, chubby, buck teeth, and a big afro. Oh, yeah, and I dressed like a nerd. That didn't help. Um, I mean, now it helps, but back in the day, it didn't help. So my dad said, you know, I'm done by you getting beat up every single day. So why don't you take on judo? So I started taking judo, and um, um, I didn't like it because girls threw me on the floor. Um, so I decided to do karate. Luckily, I was a bit better at karate, so I joined the national team um, and became second after the, uh, after the, world ch the European champion. Martial arts was critical for me because at martial arts, every time you did a training, you had to meditate. So the first few minutes of your training was meditation. And it helped me deal with the pain in my chest. So we went past the fatty bhakti stage and I enjoyed my time at karate. Um, so my dad said, you know, you might be good at karate, and um, we have a world championship coming up, but you have to make a life choice. And that life choice is either you go to university or you become a professional athlete. And I said that that choice is very, very simple. I'm going to become a professional athlete. My dad said, well, it wasn't really a choice, and it's not really a discussion. You're going to university. 
So I went to university, and um, I graduated when I, was, uh, when I was 21. Actually, when I was 20. And I'll tell you why. Um, when I was uh, 19, my classmates and I found out that university was actually not that hard. So we decided to go to the dean, and we asked the dean, listen, dude, um, what if we get straight A's for six months in a row? And if you get straight A's, you let us skip a class so we can finish university sooner. Um, of course, he laughed for 15 minutes, uh, and after he was done laughing and, and wiping his tears, he said, you know what, um, you know, I'm in a good mood, let's, let's do it. So he took the challenge. So six of my friends and myself said, straight A's for six months. And guess what? We did it. So he had to go to the CEO of the university and made us skip a class. So we all graduated when we, was, when we were pretty young. Why this was pivotal for me is I, my first job was um, at you know, 21. I didn't know anything. I was 21, had no idea about life, um, and I started to work for an insurance company. And the important part for this is my first job at a corporate, I learned I never, ever want to work for a corporate again. So I sold my house, sold my car, decided to start my own business. And that's what actually started my journey. And you'll notice that I've made a lot of choices. And sometimes you think, ah, I made a stupid choice. Had those as well. So in, in 2008, when I sold my company and decided to become an investor, my first investments lost me a lot of money. So instead of making a lot of money, I lost a lot of money. Are we good on power, guys? Okay, I'll just keep on talking. So instead of um, making a lot of money, I lost a lot of money. And the essence was I wasn't good at investing because I had no idea what investing was about. So I decided to go to Harvard and learn about investing, and eventually um, I was lucky enough to meet an amazing guy that moved to Singapore and introduced me to Golden Gate Ventures and... Um, I would say the rest is almost history. Um, I do need a screen, guys, because I want to show the audience something. Can we get the screen up? So while they're working on the screen, um, I'll, I'll talk about another choice. So I tend to get up around uh, 4 or 5 in the morning. The reason for this is, um, okay, one, I'm partially insane, but the main reason for getting up in the morning is I love cycling. And I love running, and I love doing triathlons. And at one point in time, um, I just had a rough period, and I decided I need to win over one of my biggest fears. And one of my biggest fears was swimming in open water. And you might ask yourself, why would you be afraid of swimming in open water? I have no idea. But the thought of jumping in the water where there could potentially be sharks or whatever crazy uh, fish um, was scary to me. And actually, the, the, the idea of drowning in open water was scary for me. So I made another decision. I decided, you know what? The best way to get over my fear is to sign up for an Ironman. Because the first part of an Ironman is swimming in the open water. So I trained for eight months, nonstop, and I finished my first Ironman in Hawaii last year. So the reason why I'm telling all this is for you as an entrepreneur or as an investor, you have to make life choices every single day. And you might think, the choice that I'm making right now doesn't have a big impact. It does. You have to think about, why am I making this decision? And what's going to be the impact? So I was trying to sort of rationalize my lifeline. 
and I ended up reading a blog from this guy. Do we know who he is? Yeah, he's Rick Rubin. I can, I can read it. But do you know what he does? Ideas? Anyone? Rick Rubin? Def Jam? Does Def Jam say anything? Music label? Jay-Z? Kanye West? Yeah? Okay. So Rick is the uh, founder of Def Jam. And he's an amazing producer and an amazing, amazing, amazing writer. And he's very inspirational. He's one of those guys that can jump in his studio and make a record hit in like a few minutes. But he's also very thoughtful about life. So he's written down a few life lessons. And I carry these with me every single day. And again, I want you guys to take away from these 15 minutes, every choice that you make has an impact. How big? I don't know. But think about what you're going to do next, do next. So Rick said, these are my guidelines. And I'm going to have like a few more minutes. I'll go over them one by one, and I'll pick the most important ones. So the first one is only compete against yourself. So what does it mean? It means that whoever is sitting next to you, the grass is always greener. Take care of your own fucking grass. That is crucial. It doesn't matter what the guy next to you is doing. You should take care of your own, sorry, effing grass. I'm sorry. The second one is read. Study the greats. I seriously mean this. Keep on reading. Studying the greats means that you're learning, that you're edu educating yourself, and that you're caring about yourself. If I want to be the next biggest basketball player, I should be watching videos of Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, day in, day out. Learn from the best. And be extreme. Don't be political correct. Don't be Trump, but don't be political correct. If you have an opinion, voice it. If you are the CEO of your company, voice your company. Make yourself be heard. Be extreme. Be coachable. If you have a mentor, someone doesn't like me, if you have your mentor, if you, found, if you find an advisor or a great mentor, listen. You don't have to agree, but listen and be coachable. The one that I love is, anything is possible. My mom was a uh, fantastic cook. She cooked for the elderly back in the Netherlands. And my dad worked at a, um, a big energy company um, also back in the Netherlands. They had nothing with venture capital or private equity. They cared for us and they loved us. But they didn't provide us with a, um, you know, a landing pad. So my dad said, you know, I love you, but you have to do everything on your own. And now I'm standing here talking to you guys. Which basically means that a simple guy from the Netherlands can be talking at slush to you guys. So anything is possible. Just break it down into small steps. You can change the world, but not tomorrow. Change it in seven days, or eight days, or nine days. Break it down in small steps that you can achieve. And all of those small steps become a bigger step. And don't think too much. You know, we all watch social media the entire day. Like, oh, look at this guy. Look at that guy. And look at this girl. Oh, I hate her. I hate him. Don't think too much. Focus on yourself. Focus on what you're building. Focus on your community. Focus on your company, your product, your service. 
hang with winners. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a funny video about, um, and I know my time is running out, but there's a funny video uh, from Snoop Dogg. And Snoop said, I used to assume that all of my friends had the same work ethos as I had, which is not true. So he got disappointed over and over and over again. Make sure that you hang with winners and have a winner's mentality. Learn from the greats. Don't beat yourself up and make mistakes. Get over them, but make mistakes and move on. And define what is your success. It doesn't really matter what somebody else thinks about success. It is all about your success and your goals and make sure that you achieve them. I live by these rules every single day. And that's how I try to make it work. So if you ask me, you know, how do you get up at four in the morning, jump on a bike, cycle for two hours, and go to the office? I'm 43, and I still want to get better every single day. And the one thing I want to give to you guys is make yourself better every single day. So my time is officially up, but I want to share, this is me on the bike, life-changing for me, that Iron Man. But I want to share this. Set your own goals. Write them down today, now, tonight. Before you go to bed, set your goals. But stay quiet about them. Don't go on Instagram and say, tomorrow I'm going to, or 2019 is going to be my year. Fuck that shit. Stay quiet about your goals, and you work on them. And you smash shit out of them, and when you did it, you clap for yourself. Thank you, guys.